Okay, next news in Israel. Senior Orthodox, ultra-Orthodox rabbis rule Berlin committed sexual violations. So despite, I'm going to mess up this name, I'm sorry. Despite Rabbi Eli Zer Berland being convicted by Israel's criminal courts in 2016 of indecent assault against two women, he continued to receive honors and support from the ultra-Orthodox community. That is, until recently, when three highly respected rabbinical judges from the ultra-Orthodox community determined through a special court that the public should disavow the rabbi and concluded that he did indeed commit the acts of sexual assault. Previously, Berlin supporters denied the allegations and said the conviction in Israel's state courts were not religiously significant. Uh, not, what do you mean, not religiously significant? Like they were not recognizing the legitimacy or the validity of the rulings in Israel's state courts because it was not a rabbinical judge oh. who ruled against him. They weren't yeah. recognizing the legitimacy of the secular courts. Okay, yes. Sorry, I thought like, do we have like different courts for different... We do have like Sharia courts in Israel, which I saw when I went in Israel. So apparently Muslims get their own court. This is very amazing. Like Most people don't know that... Israeli taxpayers, like non-Muslims people's tax money is going towards Islamic Sharia courts in Israel. That's like that was shocking to me that that's the case. But we <laughs> also have rabbinical courts, right, for Jewish mm -hmm. people. Um, so how did the how did this Orthodox ultra Orthodox rabbi guy manage to get a secular court instead of a Jewish one? How did he manage to, like, how did he, like, not be, wasn't able to get, like, hey, I'm, a, I'm Jewish, I want my own court, like, why is that? I mean, it was a, it was a criminal trial. All oh, right, so, so, what, is the standard that if it's a criminal, you don't get to go to your own religious court, you have to do... They, the they happen separately, they're in tandem, it's two different systems, right? right? One is the law of the land, and one recognizes divine authority. Yeah, my and understanding... And so the my community... Yeah, go on. My understanding is that the community tends to not I, um, uh, see the validity in the state's yes. criminal proceedings. It's only the religious courts that matter to them. So what's significant about this is that the ultra-Orthodox judges are actually recognizing this as a crime. Yeah, my understanding is, was that the whole Jewish course or the Islamic course do not deal with criminal stuff. They deal with like you know, with a divorce, maybe maybe in, I'm just guessing inheritance, marriage, uh, domestic abuse related stuff probably. I'm this like, I'm guessing. Imagine if I'm right about um, <laughs> family family issues in general, um, but not like if you if you kill somebody or if you what is this was sexually abuse somebody then like no like the court i mean i'm not the court the secular court of the land is going to come in like yeah we need to sorry we need to take this one which is i mean that's good but it's also fucked up that we even have religious courts in israel like a lot of people again you know this we have is, them in america no yeah there are religious courts like in the ultra orthodox community in brooklyn Wait, you could decide to be like, no, I don't want the law of the land. I want a different law. No, it's not a matter of deciding either or. You're still going to face state trial. But I'm saying within that community, they have a court system. Yeah, but that's not officially like a United States court. Like we're going to use Christian the Bible as, you know, it's not like, no, they, you have to apply the law of United States. You do not have to. Yeah, no, that's law. what I'm saying. They're yeah, happening but, separately. Okay, but in Israel... You actually do have separate laws for different people, and that's fucked up. Mm. Or in the United <laughs> States and Canada, you don't have that. I mean, every every time I say like Israel needs more secularism, people keep comparing Israel to its neighbors. And yeah, of course, if you compare <laughs> Israel, if you compare Israel to its neighbors, it's extremely secular. It comes off as very, very secular, and it's easy to be like, yay, Israel, good job for being secular, because you're comparing Israel to the lowest of the low when it comes to secularism. But when you compare Israel to the United States or Canada, then it doesn't really look that good anymore when it comes to the secularism department. And that's something that Israel needs to improve on. 
But w- I wonder how many. Okay, so this guy is like, this is not fair. Um, I sexually abuse somebody. Um, I want a Jewish court, not a secular court. But would this? Would, do you think this person would he get a different sentence under an rabbinical court? Probably. Well, right? do we know? So the rabbinical court follows Torah law, and so this guy Berlin. He um, expressed remorse over his acts and said he takes responsibility for what happened, um, which specifically was um, allegations came to light of sexual harassment and rape in 2012. He said, quote, I am willing to accept any punishment in the world, including burning me and stoning me, because that is Torah law. The punishment that was meted to me is perhaps too light, and I'm willing to accept greater punishment. So currently he's under house arrest because he has some serious health issues. He's in his 80s. Um, so he can't be in like actual prison. Okay, this is, I don't understand. Robert is saying, Armin, you are very wrong about courts in Israel. And then Robert says, it's only marriage, divorce, and even then, um, then when it comes to money, they have zero authority. Okay, didn't I just say that? Didn't I just say that it's mostly marriage and family stuff? And then, they have, and then he says they have zero authority. What do you mean they have zero authority? You just said they, it's, it's only with marriage and divorce. So they have some authority if, if they get to rule, come up with, if, if people get to decide to go to a Sharia court or to a rabbinical court instead of the secular uh, court, even when it comes to marriage, divorce, and other you know, family stuff, then that means they have some authority. So that, you know, you just contradicted yourself. But yeah, I mean, I completely agree with that. I, mean, I, I didn't say that they have full authority. What are you talking about, Robert? Anyways. Um, um, but, should but, I share Rivka's thoughts? Oh, yeah. This? But before, before you do that, another thing I want to mention is that according to, you know, Jewish scripture, even if this person is found guilty, there is really, very little punishment for their crime. Like, I mean, we have it in the Old Testament that if you rape another man's daughter... You just pay what fifty, fifty what fifty something. You p- just pay some silver to the dad, and that's you know you get the woman and it's yours now. So you the, this to- rabbi is saying that the Torah law is to burn him and stone him, and that he accepts that punishment. What the hell? Like, isn't that isn't that wait? So he says that he doesn't want a secular court because the secular court is not giving him enough punishment. I'll say the quote again. I am willing to accept any punishment in the world, including burning me and stoning me, because that is Torah law. The punishment that was meted to me was perhaps too light, and I am willing to accept a greater punishment. End okay. quote. Okay, so I'm uh, somebody tell us how why is this guy... I think this guy... Um, may, I mean, he's a rabbi, but can somebody tell me if I'm right or wrong about this? Because it seems like the Torah actually allows you to sexually abuse somebody as long as you pay for it. If you're a woman, you're going to get stoned for it. But if you're a man, you're not going to get stoned for adultery. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I'm hope. Yeah, somebody is saying, yep, 50, 50 silver coins, 50 shekels. Oh, 50 shekels. Yeah, see, I'm right. So this rabbi doesn't know his own. I know the Torah more than this rabbi. Wow, it's impressive. <laughs> I'm very impressed. There, I, my... there must be like some deep cuts. There's some deep cut Torah law that we're not familiar with. Right. I mean, let's okay. hear Rivka's thoughts. Yeah, Rivka's thoughts. Go ahead. Okay, so yeah, obviously Rivka couldn't join us today, um, but I wanted to get her thoughts on this. And she was saying that it's not surprising that they're not recognizing the legitimacy of the secular courts, but she's um, glad that it's being brought to light, in the sexual abuse in this case, because often people don't recognize the sexual abuse in these really insular communities. And um, she's saying that it's really important that the Jewish rabbis are actually calling this a crime within the framework that they do recognize. Okay. Uh, Shapam, did you want to add anything to this before we go to the next news? I mean, I was just uh, searching for the verse, Deuteronomy 22, 28 to 29. It says, if a man meets the virgin who is not betrothed and seizes her and lies with her and 
they are found then the man who lay with her shall give to the father of the young woman 50 shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he has violated her yeah so basically the whole idea in the torah is that if you break it you buy it right so if you rape a girl it's fine it's now a used product just pay the dad and take it with you take it home with you that's that's the policy right but if you're a girl and you slip with a man that you're not supposed to then stoning for you anyway yes thank you for joining us subscribe to our channel hit the bell thingy if you haven't i don't know why what has what's holding you back okay if you haven't subscribed to our channel why haven't you subscribed to our channel explain that to us please like bell <laughs> and also if you if you're not getting notifications and stuff because youtube is not telling people that we have shows because youtube is like oh this person told us that they want to get your shows right they want to get your videos but nah you we think is no and oh look oh they also hit the bell button but nah you guys are too controversial we want to show them mainstream stuff we want to show them cnn or cat videos or whatever but even you know, people are like no we want to see atheist republic and youtube is like no we don't think you want this i'm like no please show it to us we say to you we want to see atheist republic and youtube is like no we think we know what's better for you than you yourself so to solve that link there's a link in the description uh which is to our newsletter so hopefully some of our, we could email it to you so hopefully you get some of our content that way okay so yeah subscribe to our newsletter as well and share share our videos because you know we do get demonetized that's an obvious on every one of our videos so f that but we don't care about that anymore <laughs> but we also get deprioritized and that's even more damaging to us deprioritized what does that mean that means we're not we don't show up on the suggested you know videos on the right and all that you know on the on people's home pages and that's how channels grow unfortunately we can't grow so we need you guys to share our videos 